Today we are going to talk about using the periodic table to determine ground state electron configurations. You may have seen a diagram similar to this in a previous video or maybe elsewhere. What this shows is the filling order for electrons in atoms, starting with the 1s orbital, going then to the 2s and the 2p and so on and so forth. Our goal today will be to use the periodic table to assist us when determining electron configurations of atoms. And again, we're going to base this on where the atom is on the periodic table. Inspecting the periodic table, we can almost treat it like a book where the top left corner is the, or that represents the orbital that's lowest in energy, the 1s, and then as we read from left to right, top to bottom, scanning through the rows, we go to orbitals that are higher and higher in energy and electrons that reside in those orbitals. Over here on the left hand side, um, and helium is included in this, um, we have the S block elements. Um, over on the far right hand side, we have the P block elements in the middle, the D block, and not shown here are the F block, which are the lanthanides and actinides. They're normally shown at the very bottom of a periodic table. Now, importantly, if we were to attach labels to our rows of the periodic table, we would have the first row, the second row, the third row, the fourth row, and so on and so forth. You'll notice that the designations for S and P match this row number. For example, in the first row, we have the 1S. Of course, there is no such thing as the 1P because that's quantum, those sets of quantum numbers are forbidden. Then on the second row, we have the 2S and the 2P. On the third row, the 3S and the 3P. And you might be wondering, well, why is the 3D written down here? And it actually has to do with the energy of electrons in the 3d orbital it just so happens that the 4s is lower in energy than the 3d sometimes this section of the periodic table the d block is referred to as the n minus 1 d okay now what that n is is principal quantum number which is also represented by the row so here we are in row 4 4 minus 1 is 3 so this is the 3d Below that would be the 4D and the 5D and so on and so forth. It's important to remember that this is the whole reason why electrons fill into orbitals in the way that they do is all from the standpoint of stability. The electrons fill into orbitals with the lowest energy first, followed by the next lowest and the next lowest. This, the lowest energy is, um, represented by orbitals where the probability of finding the electron um, is relatively close to the nucleus. And as the orbital is higher and higher in energy, the chances of finding the nucleus or finding the electron in an area are farther and farther from the nucleus. It's also important to remember that there is a maximum of two electrons per orbital. And lastly, we can combine this information with, with what we remember from electron configurations. So you'll recall that the S subshell has one orbital, the P subshell has three, and the D has five. Now what you can see by counting, let's take the 2S for example. The 2S, you'll notice that there are two boxes inside of it. One of them corresponds to the 2S1 electron, and one corresponds to the 2S2 electron. So what this means is in the 2s orbital, there are a maximum of two electrons. We can repeat this for any of the p blocks or the p um, subshells here. And you can see that they're broken up into six boxes. Each box represents an orbital that can hold two electrons for a total in the p subshell as for six. And we can repeat this with the d, seeing that there are five orbitals holding two electrons for a total of 10. Let's put this into practice. What you're looking at on the top of this slide is a color-coded diagram showing the S, P, D, and F blocks of the periodic table. 
And right below that, I'm showing a zoomed in version of the periodic table, just the first two rows for, to start. Let's write the electron configuration of helium using this method. So I'll put an arrow on the slide showing where helium is on the periodic table and where, it, where that corresponds to on this color-coded periodic table. So helium has two electrons. And if we count, so we always will start from the lowest in energy, which is the 1s. So I'm going to put little kind of check marks. So we're going to start here, 1s1, 1s2. So the full electron configuration for helium is 1s2. If we draw an orbital diagram increasing in energy, we have the 1s orbital and it has contains two electrons, one spin up, one spin down. Now let's look at beryllium. Again, showing a color, a color coded arrow here, demonstrating where beryllium is um, in this blocked version of the periodic table. Beryllium contains four electrons. Its electron configuration, I'll put some checks again. We start with hydrogen or with the 1s1 electron, so 1s1, 1s2. Then we move to the 2s1 and the 2s2. So the full electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2. If we were to draw an energy or an orbital diagram, we still have the 1s orbital, but then we have the next highest in energy, the 2s orbital. And this is because when those two electrons, those first two electrons fill in the 1s, now there's no more room. Remember, to maximum two electrons per orbital. That means that the next two electrons need to fill in the 2s orbital because it's the next highest, it's the, it's the next highest in energy. Now let's look at oxygen, which gets a little trickier because now we're moving into the 2p territory. So we're going to start by writing our number of electrons, eight electrons. And again, we'll use check marks starting from the 1s1 orbital and the one or the 1s1 electron, 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4. So again, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 4. And we can draw our energy diagram, our orbital diagram. We have our 1s orbital with two electrons. We have our 2s orbital with two electrons. And we have our 2p subshell, which re you'll remember hat contains three orbitals. This is our 2p subshell. And we had four electrons total. And you'll recall that electrons spread out before pairing to minimize energy. So we're going to have our 2p subshell that looks like this. One orbital will contain two electrons and the other two in the 2p will contain one for a total of two, four, six, eight electrons. All right, now it's your turn. Pause the video and try to write the electron configuration and draw the orbital diagram for phosphorus and calcium. Try it on your own and then unpause when you think you've got it. Let's start with phosphorus. I personally like to write down the number of electrons to start and then Write the electron configuration, starting from 1s. So 1s1, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s2, 3p, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we can write the full configuration if we'd like. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. Or we can write the abbreviated electron configuration using the nearest noble gas shortcut. So all of these electrons represent the core electrons, which is has the electron configuration of neon, 3s2, 3p3. 
And we can draw, of course, an energy diagram um, with containing the orbitals. I'm gonna just write the noble gas core here and start from the 2s, or excuse me, the 3s. So I'm only showing the valence electrons here. So we have the 3s and the 3p orbital. The 3s contains two electrons, as we see here. The 3p orbital contains three unpaired electrons. Now let's move on to calcium. Calcium is has one, two, three, four, five additional electrons than phosphorus for a total of 20 electrons. So we can start from the configuration of phosphorus, which starts with a neon core, 3s2. Now we're just going to continue in the 3p. So instead of having 3p, we actually have, or 3p3, we have 3p6, okay? And then we can go down, so we finish the 3p, but we still need two additional electrons. Right now we're only representing 18 electrons. So now we need to add those electrons which are found in the 4s orbital. So we're in the 4s2, okay? So now we've written the electron configuration for calcium. Of course, this looks a little bit funky because we've included a noble gas that's actually the one before the nearest noble gas. So just to, just to confirm, we can rewrite this entire chunk of electrons as argon, which is 18 electrons, right? Neon plus eight, 4s2. So this shows the electron configuration of calcium. And if I were to draw this kind of shortcut energy uh, uh, orbital diagram, I could draw the electron configuration of argon, which I'm not going to draw all the orbitals of, and then show the 4s, um, so show the 4s orbital containing two electrons, which shows the ground state configuration of calcium. Let's try another one on your own, iron and bromine. When you think you have it, unpause the video. Let's start with iron. So iron has 26 electrons. I'm going to use the nearest noble gas shortcut, which would be argon. So I'm going to start with argon. And now to know which row I'm in, remember one, two, three, four, I'm in the four, starting after argon in the 4s, 4s2. And remember now I'm in the 3d, one, two, three, four, five, six, 3d6. Again, my orbital diagram, or at least some version of my orbital diagram. I have my 4s electrons, and I have now, remember my d block actually contains five orbitals, and I have six electrons. So they're going to spread out and then pair up for a total of argon, which is 18, plus eight electrons, which is, adds up to my 26. Now for bromine, I'm just going to keep going, okay? Bromine is over here. So, you know, I'm not gonna stop at 3d6, I'm gonna continue going. So again, bromine has 35 electrons. I'm gonna use what I just built with argon, or excuse me, with iron, argon, 4s2, 3d. Now I need to fill the entire 3d orbital or subshell. So I remember with iron, I stopped at 3d6, 3d7, 8, 9, 10, 3d10. And now remember, I'm in the 4p because it's what corresponds with this whole row right here. So 4p5 to get to bromine, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I won't be drawing my orbital diagram for this because I ran out of space. But if you were, you would fully fill out the 3D orbital like I drew for iron. And then on top of that, you'd have um, an additional 4P subshell, which would contain five electrons. In this video, we've discussed 
some practice examples of how to distinguish orbital blocks of the periodic table and use the periodic table to determine electron configurations. I highly recommend running through the practice problem showing below with all of these various atoms and determining their electron configuration as well as drawing their orbital diagram. You can also challenge yourself by choosing any element on the periodic table and trying to write out its electron configuration and draw its orbital diagram. If you're feeling extra adventurous, you can also try the same for ions, which we'll discuss in another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.